What's up everybody? Chris with South Carolina Gun School and today I want to revisit my everyday carry as far as knives. Welcome back everybody and uh, we're gonna like I said we're gonna discuss or I should say review my everyday carry options for um, knives uh, I did a video a few years I should say a few years a couple of years ago uh, talking about everyday carry knives and what I was carrying uh, at the time which is why you might recognize the Kershaw here that I've got uh, this was, you know, one of the ones I was carrying at the time and still uh, carry uh, periodically. Uh, I'm a big fan of this Kershaw because of the Emerson Wave that you can see, the little hook here. What that does will hook on clothing and pull right open, depending on what you're doing, especially in your pocket. Uh, you can set it to where it hooks and opens up to where you are got it down or you can reverse it where it will open and you'll be holding it uh, up I'm you know I like the the Tonto style tips and stuff I'm been a big fan of those got a piece of tape on there but yeah this is you know a really really good option you got your I, it feels good in the hands the way everything is cut you got your safety latch right there uh, in the middle but yeah, this is you know one of the ones you can go back in and take a look at uh, in the other video as well. I'll have links to page descriptions for each one of these knives. I'm gonna, not going to sit here and get into metal, what metal was used, blade length, this, that, blah, blah, blah. To me, I think sometimes that gets a little boring sitting and going through all that in a video when everybody can go on to their respective pages and take a look at it. But outside of the Emerson Wave, you do have a uh, extended thumb. So you can open it up with your thumb. Uh, the reason I've made some modifications in my everyday carry knives is I was able to uh, speak with a gentleman that uh, teaches um, knife skills and stuff for self-defense. And he told me that you need to ask yourself two questions. Can you get to your knife with one hand, either left or right? Can you open your knife with one hand, either left or right? So that was, you know, it kind of got me thinking because at the time I was like, yeah, I can get to this with, you know, one hand. I can open it with one hand, but I don't necessarily, I will say I don't practice as much with my left hand. It feels a little awkward doing that uh, with my left hand, so I did make some modifications to what I carry here and then I've got the Columbia River Knife and Tool Minimalist. Uh, there's a couple of different versions of it as far as what kind of point that you have. They've got a tonneau, a drop point and different things and you can see this is a, a fixed blade knife. It's got a little kydex sheath to it and you can get um, dog tag chains or something like that, thin necklace run it through here and you can make it a neck knife under your shirt, pull it right off. Uh, it actually comes with a little belt clip. It's not the best belt clip in the world, uh, but me, I just drop it down in my pocket. And if I got to open it with one hand, I can take my thumb here and just a little bit of pressure, pop that right off. And it's got some very deep grooves. It feels really, really good in the fingers or in my hands, I should say, even if I'm going to hold it like that. Still feels very, very good, but a nice little knife to, you know, have. A lot of people, I don't think, really carry too many fixed blade knives as a everyday carry. So, just something to show you what's out there. I do carry this one uh, periodically, depending on what I'm wearing and where I'm going. 
The next is the Hogue here. Uh, this is, Hogue is kind of like your, your bench mate. Um, I don't think it's quite as well known as what the uh, bench mate is, but I do, I like Hogue's. They do a lot of mil uh, a lot of knives for the military and stuff, but it's right here. Now it doesn't have the safety levers like what the bench made. The tension in this thing is where your safety's at because I go right here and then I have to give it a nice little push. Uh, this is the Hogue, uh, what is it? Explicit is what they call it. It's very, very good, very, very sharp. You see back up. Again, I'm not gonna sit here and get into blade length and steel and all that stuff. You'll be able to go and check out all the descriptions, but this one has become a more predominant carry for me. It's a little bit lighter than what this is, and it's a little bit easier to get to than having to dig deep down in my pocket for the minimalist, but in worst case scenario, if you can't get it out and get it open, if you can get it out and get it up to their body, you can open it up into them and stuff. I like this knife. And then the one that I saved for last is what has made, I know, a... No, I shouldn't say like a shock, but what you know, a very big impression in the knife world, uh, everyday carry world, is what... The Provoke, the Columbia River Knife and Tool Provoke. I know this was designed and then uh, sold to Columbia River Knife and Tool. But I mean, this is just an awesome, you got your finger groove, this is your Karamba style. And then you see with this, all you're doing is just a little push. It's out and ready to go. Very, very nice knife. I mean, I've been a, Huge, huge fan of this since it uh, first kind of got demoed in a few videos by the person that designed it. I mean, that you saw what I just did. It's got a little lock right here. Uh, you think it's like a push button where you push it in, but it's not. You actually kind of push it down and you see what happens. Like, so if I hold it up and unlock it, it'll automatically start falling back down in the spot. But, Yep, this is just, I mean, a super, super cool knife. Here's your little belt clip. So you push back up here at the top. This pops up, slides right down again. Another low profile, kind of similar to what the Hogue is. But I mean, this is just really, really cool. They've actually got a few different versions of it now. You have just the Provoke, and then you have the, is it the Provoke or the First Responder Provoke? So the differences between the Provoke and the First Responder is you get your little, I know it's kind of hard to see, and I'll have links for the Provoke and the First Responder. Uh, you've got a little uh, window breaker right here. So if you're a First Responder and you want something to help you out, you've got your window breaker, pop it out, hook it right in there, and this thing is sharp enough to cut right through the seatbelt. But you've got your window breaker there, and it comes with, I didn't bring it out here. Crap. It comes with a really, really, really nice Kydex sheath. Uh, and it comes with attachments for Molly attachments or to your belt. So your first responders or um, EMS, police, fire, whatever it might be. If you're wearing some type of vest, and you've got Molly attachments on it. The first responder does come with the Kydex sheath, if you have just the regular Provoke, uh, the regular Provoke doesn't come with the Kydex sheath, but you can order a sheath for it because it fits in the same exact sheath. It, even with the little window breaker that doesn't make um, any kind of difference. They're still uh, fairly similar to each other as far as fitting in the Kydex sheath. The big difference is you're getting, with the first responder, you're getting the window breaker on the tip here and you're getting the sheath with it. But I don't, I haven't really carried it with the sheath because I'm carrying it more in my pocket. So the sheath kind of is a little bulky to be putting down into my pocket. But again, if you're carrying it on a vest 
or belt or something like that. That sheath is really, really nice. It's a really, really nice Kydex sheath. And you get some really, really good attachments with it too to be able to belt molly attachment, anything like that. This is just, uh, I love this freaking knife. I've been wanting this thing for a really, really long time now. So again, this is provoke first responder, or they might just call it first responder. And then they've got like a one provoke, I think earth they call it, which has got the uh, seracoding to make it uh, an earth seracoding. But this is just, I mean, <laughs> just sick man this is just a really really nice knife i love this thing uh i will say i will be doing a more in-depth review on the hog itself and the provoke itself i'll be discussing you know the statistics a little bit more in, in those videos but i just wanted to kind of revisit my everyday knife carry because this was something i did a while back and i wanted to revisit because i've kind of changed as you can see, these right here are my main two knives that I go to when I carry. This right here is, you know, I like both of these. It, these are my go-tos. If I'm going out, these are my go-tos. These are kind of, eh, I might, you know, depending on what I'm wearing. Especially this, just because it's really, really light. It's not quite as heavy as what the others are. But right here, these are my go-to. The Hogue and the Provoke. So Hogue Explicit, Columbia River Knife and Tool Provoke, uh, First Responder or First Responder, I can't really remember, I apologize. But again, all, each one of these knives will be down in the description below so you can go in and take a look at statistics and price point. I will say if budget, if you're on a budget, these are going to be your options. If you don't mind spending a little bit, these are going to be your options. So go and check them out. I recommend somebody having a knife on them. And I'll kind of, I'll tell you what, I'm going to revisit my everyday carry as well. So as far as what I carry every day you know, with handgun wise, knife, all that stuff. I think that will be a really good video for y'all to see. But yeah, these are really, really great options for everyday carry knives because most of the time, if you can't take your handgun somewhere, uh, you can at least carry a pocket knife unless you're getting into like courthouse, courtrooms, your public offices and things like that. You're not going to be able to carry anything at all. Oh, excuse me. But these really really great options this right here i just i can't talk enough about this thing it's just absolutely amazing knife got good thickness to it i mean this is this has got some serious quality into it i love this thing absolutely love this thing if you carry karambits and you like karambits this is what you need absolutely no doubt in my mind there's probably some other people that are arguing about that, but still, any one of these is, is a great option for an everyday carry, but I will say these are my favorite two knives right here. So go in, look at the checkout, the descriptions below, see which one you like. If you don't like any of them, there's other great options out there. And another thing is check what your state's uh, laws are as far as knives. Every state is different. I know for South Carolina here, there is no minimum or maximum length, and that applies to uh, fixed blade knives as well, as long as it's classified as a knife. So if you happen to have a uh, knife and it's got a seven inch blade on it, as long as it's a knife, you can carry that without getting in trouble in South Carolina. I know there's some states they don't want you to have over there a three inch blade or four inch or you know the life or the, the length of the whole knife grip and blade can extend over a certain amount of inches, but make sure you check out your uh, state's policies as far as knives. I think the Provoke here will probably work for that. The blade is not really that long. And the thing you want to remember about Karamit knives is 
there is a difference between having a straight blade knife. This isn't so, you know, this isn't something I'm gonna be able to come in and stab somebody. I mean, enough pressure, yes, I can probably get it in there, but this is used more for your cutting and things like that. It's gonna be a lot different than this right here. Uh, if you're gonna carry something straight blade, big thing to remember about that is you wanna stick and twist. And that opens that wound up where if you just stick in and out, if you don't hit anything major, you know, it might not do that much damage. Uh, but if you take stick and turn, either way, that's gonna open that wound up and uh, make it a whole lot more painful for them. Where with something like this, you're really gonna sit and try to cut. Yes, you can stab, but it's gonna be more of a kind of a, a hooking stab. So you're kind of stabbing and cutting. Where with this, you can just kind of stab if you need to. But with the fixed blade, remember, stab and turn is something that you always want to do. But again, I hope everybody enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making this for everyone. Again, huge shout out to all of my subscribers, followers. Thank you for watching. If you're not a subscriber or following us, uh, please click that subscribe button below. Uh, for all my subscribers, uh, continue to like, share, comment, and I'm going to be putting out some other great videos for everybody. So. Again, remember, if you're not shooting, you're reloading. If you're not reloading, you're fighting. If you're not fighting, you're dead. Train to live.